In this first installment of my vintage pattern collection, the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, and mail order patterns will be featured. Given the collection is so vast and would take an eternity to talk about in one video, I decided to break it up in installments to make things easier. The first patterns in the collection are from the 1920s, and uh, this first pattern is uh, from Buttrick, and uh, it was first patented in the U.S. on August 19, 1919, and the second time on June 23, 1923. Now, I was able to access this information on the instruction sheet uh, that came with the uh, pattern, and uh, if I had not been able to find those dates, um, I would have been able to look at this and know that this was a 1920s pattern based on a few other things. Um, of course, the garments on the cover, the hairstyles, and the pricing. Now, the pattern also reads on the cover a delineator style, including the new Deltor. Now, the Deltor was the name for the instruction sheet, was given, uh, which was given to it by the uh, gentleman who started this pattern line, which is Ebenezer Buttrick, and the pattern's named after him. And uh, Mr. Buttrick uh, was the first to uh, introduce an enlarged and detailed instruction sheet called the Deltor. He was also the first to create a sewing pattern in various sizes, and it was also his idea to use tissue paper for mass production of sewing patterns. So that's just a bit of history for uh, you vintage pattern collectors. Also, I wanted to share with you uh, two original delineators. And uh, these delineators were featured in my heirloom corset video. So if you have not seen that video, I would encourage you to take a look at it. But this first delineator is from 1893 and the second from 1895. And I hope you could see those dates on there. But uh, what I'll do is I'll take out the 1893 so you can take a look at it and I'll try to be as careful as I possibly can here under normal circumstances I would have my gloves um, in handling this magazine but um, here are some of the pages here and you have gowns here and you can see the pattern numbers under each one of the gowns and uh, this is what the women would have been going through and uh, picking out what pattern they wanted or garment they wanted um, to make and uh, here you have some collars and you have skirts and sleeves and you have uh, children's fashions here more skirts and you have home decor and you have an article back here and you have some advertisements and uh, advertisement for scissors and on the back you have a gallery of garments and here you can see all of the uh, pattern numbers under each one of the garments and I'm going to do my very best to put this back into the cellophane here and the cellophane is going to be um, cellophane bags are going to be your best friend so I encourage you to get some of those if you have vintage patterns and again that's a delineator from 1893 the next pattern is from Hollywood Patterns, and this is from 1921, and uh, the date is right there, and this also acts as the pattern number. The next pattern is from the Pictorial Review, and the Pictorial Review has a connection to uh, the Butcher brand, and I'll share that with you later in the video. But this pattern was uh, patented on September 22nd, 1925, and I was able to access that information on its instruction sheet. And the last pattern in the 1920s section is uh, from Simplicity Pattern, and this is for five hats. And of course, you can see here the cover is uh, torn. And this is just the photocopy of the original. And I do this with some of my pattern covers. And there's the pattern in the instruction sheet. And that just uh, saves, per, uh, preserves the uh, pattern. And um, so I'm not manipulating it all the time. The next patterns are from the 1930s, and I've got quite a few here, and uh, let me put these in two piles here. still have pieces from the delineator here, and I'm going to see if I can brush this away here. And uh, the first pattern is from the Chicago Tribune, and uh, this pattern was easy to date based on the information provided uh, by the original owner of the pattern. And uh, she wrote that this was a um, 
July 22nd, 1934. And I like this when original uh, pattern owners were thought, thoughtful enough to uh, include this kind of information with their patterns. Now, uh, this pattern is a mail order pattern and often on mail order patterns, uh, you can date the pattern based on the uh, postmark date on the pattern. But uh, given that the pattern, um, uh, the envelope did not have that information on there, uh, this was good of her to put this on um, the outside of the uh, pattern. And of course, this is a photocopy of the original. And the other special thing about this uh, pattern is that it has a little, little emblem right here in the corner and it reads NRA. And I'll show you what that emblem looks like. And this is what it is and it reads NRA member, we do our part. And the NRA stood for the National Recovery Administration. On June 16, 1933, President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed the National Industrial Recovery Act, an ambitious effort to hasten recovery from the depression and cure economic ills through public work spending and industrial self-government. The goal of the administration was to eliminate cutthroat competition by bringing industry, labor and government together to create codes of fair practices and set prices and allowed industries to get together and write codes of fair competition. The codes intended both to reduce destructive competition and help workers to set minimum wages and maximum weekly hours as well as minimize prices at which products could be sold. The agency ultimately established 557 basic codes and 208 supplementary codes that affected about 22 million workers. Although the codes were hastily drawn and overly complicated and reflected the interest of big business at the expense of the consumer and small businessmen, they nevertheless did improve labor conditions in some industries and also aided in the unionization movement. The NRA ended when it was invalidated by the Supreme Court in 1935 but many of its provisions were included in subsequent legislation. And so that's a little bit of history on this pattern. And I'll also uh, take it out so you can take a look at it. And this is my original purchase order receipt, which is what I keep with all my patterns, with a great many of them, I would say. And we'll go ahead and take this out. And the other great thing I like about this pattern is that it has its instruction sheet on the reverse side so this cuts out having the large instruction sheets like we have today and that's amazing and this pattern is unprinted which uh, was the case with a great many of the patterns earlier um, although there were some uh, printed patterns were introduced in the 1920s and they would not become commonplace until sometime after World War II and uh, put this back in here There we go, and we'll move on to the next pattern. And this pattern is also an NRA pattern, and this is from The Country Gentleman, and this is from 1936. And this is a original magazine cover with an advertisement on the back for clocks. And I'll take this out so you can take a look at it as well. And this is also an unprinted pattern. And uh, let's see, and of course you have the instruction sheet there, and it's, uh, Pretty worn there. Now the other amazing thing about this pattern is it had a little gem in it and uh, this is um, giving detailed um, information about the cover of the uh, envelope and that's just nice. It's amazing when you can have uh, previous owners that are thoughtful enough to put that kind of information in with the uh, pattern and uh, this just adds a uh, Add so much value to your collection and uh, as you can see this pattern cover is coming apart as well and we'll put this back in as carefully as we possibly can and then we'll move on to the next pattern here and the next pattern in the collection is from Dewberry and uh, Dewberry was manufactured by the Simplicity Company exclusively for the F.W. Woolworth department store. And if you're unfamiliar with uh, the Woolworth store, um, it was a five and dime where you can buy things like this, patterns, material, candy, home goods, you name it. 
And uh, this pattern is undated and unprinted. And uh, of course, you know that this is 1930s based on the garment style here. And the price is 10 cents. And the size on this pattern is a size 16 and bust 34. The next pattern is uh, from McCall. And uh, this is from 1935. And this is for a sports dress and jacket. And um, the one thing that I like about McCall's uh, it was consistent in dating its patterns. So um, it from uh, the 1920s, uh, you could find it on the envelope, on the flap in the 1930s, and then from the 40s to current, you can find it on the uh, perimeter of the pattern cover, pattern back. And uh, this is a printed pattern. And the next pattern is a uh, wedding gown or it could be an evening, uh, excuse me, afternoon dress or a bridal um, bridesmaid's dress. And that's just beautiful. And you can see that the cover has yellowed with age and it's a printed pattern. And um, this pattern is featured in the uh, bridal gallery on Pinterest. The next pattern is a 1937 tie pattern. And you always want to have at least one of these, one or two of these patterns in your collection. And it just adds value to it. And it's a 25 cents pattern. And in, in it too is a, a printed pattern. And uh, let me move these over here because they're going to land on the floor. The next pattern in the collection is from the Pictorial Review. And this is a pattern for sleeves. And a few seasons ago, uh, I would say about two seasons ago, um, Christian Soriano did a great jacket with bell sleeves. And uh, it's just, just an awesome pattern. The pattern is 25 cents. And here's the original receipt here. And I'll take this out for you so you can take a better look at it. And the best part about this pattern is that, that it is a printed pattern. And as I said, that there were some cases where you had printed patterns. And then also show this to you as well. Now this is different from what you normally see in an instruction sheet. This is made out of tissue paper. And we'll go ahead and put that back together. And the other remarkable thing about this pattern is that it had a store stamp, which is another way that you can date your patterns. And this reads the Golden Eagle Dry Goods Company, and out of, it's out of Denver, Colorado. And then also you have the uh, pattern pieces here on the outside. And uh, let me also share this with you too. Now this is what I uh, keep with some of my patterns, is I have some just some additional information which adds up uh, some value to the collection. I'm going to go ahead and put this back in. And I'll read this to you. And it reads, The Pictorial Review was an American women's magazine published from 1899 to 1939. It merged with the Delineator in 1937 and ceased publication two years later. So there's the connection. There's its connection to the Buttrick brand. Um, also, uh, the store stamp that I just showed you, uh, this pattern was purchased from the Golden Eagle Dry Goods Company in Denver, Colorado. In the late 19th century, it was a leading department store for many years until the death of its founder, Leopold Henry Goldman, in 1936. So as I said, this is the kind of information that I like to attach to my patterns um, because whoever uh, acquires the collection after me, they have um, a bit of history that goes along with um, the pattern. And we'll go ahead and put that back in the package here. And put that back in order. And the next patterns, the next two patterns are from Simplicity. And uh, that's uh, this is just a really neat pattern. You have the top and you have the skirt, and you can tuck the blouse uh, right down into the skirt to make a um, make it look like a full gown with your belt or you can wear it on the outside. And the final pattern is a, um, I guess you could say that is a, um, like a house coat or a um, house dress. And of course it can be worn as a tunic over a skirt. And the next patterns, and we'll go ahead and put these away. Okay. 
And the next patterns are from the 1940s. And the first pattern I'll share with you is um, from Advanced Pattern. Oops, put that over there. And um, this pattern was easy to date based on the information provided on the cover. And the information reads, a hit song in the Paramount picture, The Pale Face, starring Bob Hope and Jane Russell. And uh, this pattern is from 1948, and the film was re released on December 24th, 1948. And that's great. It's just great to have that kind of information. It's just, just so easily accessible. And uh, the other thing about this pattern, too, is that uh, if I had not been able to access the date, then uh, just the fact that uh, J.C. Penney's is right on the bottom of the pattern would have told me that this was a much earlier pattern. And uh, advanced patterns were sold exclusively at the J.C. Penney store. And then also advance um, was, um, was the first uh, commission to make Barbie patterns. So that's another bit of information. And the next pattern is also from advance. And uh, this pattern is, um, is a uh, pattern for a um, peplum top and a line skirt. And I always put these little um, posty um, stickers on um, at the bottom of my pattern. So um, just some additional information. And this also um, it adds to the posterity of the collection, but also alerts the uh, next owner of the um, importance of the pattern and the history of it. And the next pattern is from the American Weekly. And uh, the American Weekly was a Sunday newspaper supplement published by the Hearst Corporation. And this was from uh, November 1st, 1896 to 1966. And that was for six, uh, 60 years. And this is another peplum top. And of course you have your embroidery there. And it's a size 20 and the bus 38. Now, let me just say this. Um, if you um, are a avid vintage pattern collector, do not let the size of the pattern um, steer you away from purchasing it. These patterns can always be, if you use your patterns, they can always be sized up or sized down. Um, so um, I've seen people who um, like patterns, but they won't get the pattern because of the size. So it doesn't matter if the pattern is a size four or a size 20, get the pattern because it can add value to your collection. And if you are using your vintage patterns, um, as I said, they can be sized up or sized down. And then also, um, with that being said about using the patterns, uh, use pattern weights rather than pins because uh, you don't want to uh, ruin the integrity of the tissue paper. So it's already delicate enough, so just make a copy of the pattern and then, um, and then just go from there. But I'll uh, show you what this pattern looks like. And this is the original cover. Of course, this is the photocopy here. And uh, this is an unprinted pattern. And uh, here's the original embroidery sheet that was never used. And uh, this is a pattern that I do plan on um, making the, uh, the top. But uh, I would uh, make a photocopy of the embroidery sheet because I want to keep this intact. Let's see if I can put this back. And we'll move on to the next section. put this back in its section so I don't lose it. And the next patterns in the collection are from Hollywood Patterns. And I've got to keep these in order here. I've got quite a few here. these up here. Put those over here. Now the uh, Hollywood patterns um, um, had two ways that they um, designed their covers. Uh, they had the artwork and then they had those that uh, had the stars on those. So we're going to start with the ones with the artwork. Now this one is dated for May 4th, 1944. And um, if I had not been able to find the date which um, was supplied to me, on uh, the reverse side of the pattern, um, which is stamped 
stamped on it. So I'll show you on this next pattern uh, where that would be. Uh, I would not have been able to, uh, I, I would have been able to date the pattern based on the cover and uh, the look of the pattern and the style of the garments. I'm going to love the ruffles around the neck and the little panels there in the dress. And this uh, number here, uh, 1352, is not the, uh, of course, not the year, but it is the uh, pattern number. And the next pattern is a house coat or house dress. And here the pattern uh, number is 1946, but it's also the year. And the next patterns, of course, are from the stars. And the first is Olympi Bradna, and this pattern is dated August 5th, 1940. And I was able to find that date right here on the bottom part of the pattern. And that's what um, Hollywood Patterns was good at, especially when you had uh, the patterns with the stars on them, that they um, would uh, stamp date the pattern on the back, and that made it easy to date. And then also, uh, just given uh, the star and, uh, and the information that's provided here, what film production company they worked for, what film they were in, that also allows you to date the pattern. And the next pattern is uh, from um, Claudette Colbert. And she's one of my favorites. She was uh, employed with Paramount Studios for a number of years. And she signed uh, with it in 1928. And she became one of the highest paid actors in Hollywood, demanding $150,000 per film. And uh, in 1940, she turned down a seven-year deal with Paramount for $200,000 per year after learning she could make $150,000 per film as a freelance actor. And she was a pretty spunky lady. Her films are really great, too. I'll move these over here. And the next actress is Dorothy Jordan. And she was with RK Radio Pictures. And that was a film and distribution company. And the next actress is Dolores Del Rio. And uh, she was with... Uh, Warner Brothers uh, from 1934 to 1936 and she had a, a great career. And the next actress is Brenda Marshall and the film that she was in uh, was uh, The Captains of the Clouds and that was in 1942 starring James Cagney and the film was released on February 21st 1942. And the next actress is Priscilla Lane and uh, Miss uh, Lane was in the film Miss Wilwright Discovers America and the name of the film was changed by Warner Brothers to Million Dollar Baby and this was in 1941 and she's also profiled uh, in the book The Women of Warner Brothers The Lives and Careers of 15 Leading Ladies and that book was published in 2001 and it's also a ebook and the other information I have on Miss Lane here is that uh, she was in the uh, Alfred Hitchcock thriller Saboteur and that was in 1942. And so uh, this is the kind of information that I like to put on my patterns. And again, this adds to the posterity of the collection. And last but not least is uh, Jane Wyman. And Jane Wyman was in the film Tugboat Annie Sells Again, and this was 1940. And uh, I thought that was the last one, but this is... Uh, the next one here, and this is uh, Ann Shirley, and this pattern is uh, August 4th, 1941, and I found that date on the uh, reverse side of the pattern, as I showed earlier, and uh, Miss Shirley was also with RK Radio Pictures, and after playing the title character in the film adaptation of Anne of Green Gables in 1934, she adopted the stage name Ann Shirley. And uh, she also retired from acting in 1944. So as I said, this is just uh, good information to have to attach to your patterns, especially patterns of this uh, magnitude. I'll go ahead and put that back in the box here. And the next pattern are from McCall. And the first pattern is uh, a 1943 hat pattern. And the next is a 1947 blouse pattern from McCall. And uh, this is a 1949 dress pattern from McCall. 
Now, the one thing, uh, other thing that I'd like to note here is that um, as uh, time goes on, you see the prices go up, and not just for uh, economic reasons, but uh, the patterns became, um, the garments became more elaborate. So this is a uh, 40 cent pattern, and uh, the dress is a $1 pattern. And go ahead and put that back here in the box. And the next patterns in the collection are from Simplicity. And uh, this pattern is 1940. And uh, this is a fun pattern. And as you can see, the artwork here tells you that this is a, um, a 40s pattern. Now, um, of course, the garments could uh, cross over to other decades, so that's another thing to, to uh, take into consideration. And it's a 15 cent pattern. And so, of course, you see the artwork, and then the uh, ladies here have longer legs and longer torsos and necks. And the next pattern is uh, a jacket and uh, slacks pattern. And that's a great pattern, I like that. And the next is a hat pattern. And so you have your mittens and your handbag there. And the next patterns are from the bow pattern. And I'm gonna put that up there. Let's put this in order here. And uh, this pattern is, um, well, the little tag is kind of turned here, but it's a 1942 pattern. And um, this, uh, I was able to find that date on the reverse side. Um, now, although Vogue did um, date some of its patterns around the 50s, 60s, um, it's kind of iffy if you can find a date. So this is one of those rare things. And um, just like the Hollywood patterns, I was able to date it based on the information on the, the stamp on the back. But um, but uh, Vogue was just kind of kind of iffy on its dating of its patterns. But uh, but you just have to look. And the next pattern is uh, for a snood headpiece and handbag. And this pattern is from 1946, and that date was found on the, the reverse side stamp. And uh, here's a Vogue special design, and I just love this look here. And I'd like to call these liner notes when I see little notes on uh, the outside of the pattern. So um, the original owner had some plans for what she wanted to do with this uh, pattern and just never got around to it. And this pattern is dated December 9th, 1942. And of course, I was able to find that information right here on the, the bottom collection as well. And we'll go ahead and put these back in the box. Now we're on to the mail order patterns. Quite a few of those. And the first in the collection is from Ann Adams. And Ann Adams and Miriam Martin um, were uh, connected uh, with the uh, mail order patterns brands. So if you uh, could get, get your hands on at least one or two of those, I would uh, really encourage you to do so because that also adds value to your collection. And I just love this. And here you have a military style skirt. And there's the original purchase order receipt. The next pattern is from Augustine Lamar. And that's a great pattern. The next pattern is from, I believe this is pronounced Vicky of Milan. And of course, this is a photocopy of the pattern, of the uh, envelope. And this is Miriam Martin. And like I said, this is a one of those uh, name brands that you would like to have in your collection. It just adds value to it. And it's a cute summer dress. And of course, if I were to make this dress, I would add a little panel right there in the uh, front there because that's just a little low for my taste. And the next pattern is an opera coat and dress. And it's got bracelet sleeves. And uh, the dress is really beautiful. This would look good in brocade fabric. And the next is another dress. The next pattern is a dress. And it has a mandarin collar and three buttons. 
and you have princess darts there in the waist. And uh, here's another great summer dress, and it's got a capelet here. And this too is a photocopy. And this is a tennis outfit, and you have a blouse and the culottes. And uh, here we have the date on the pattern here, and it reads uh, 1974. It, actually, it's September 4th, 1974. And it's got the original purchase order receipt. And then I have uh, another dress pattern here, and I just love this, this collar here and how it fits right in the, into the waist. And this, too, is a photocopy. Put that back in the package. And now we're on to the prominent patterns. And these are mail order patterns. Okay, let's see. And mail order patterns um, were, you could find mail order patterns in magazines and uh, newspapers from 1930s to the 1980s. And this is one of my favorite designers, Olga Cassini. And that's a great uh, dress pattern. And this is a blouse and skirt. And here you have pleats on the side. And here's another one from uh, Olga Cassini. And uh, here's the last one from Mr. Cassini. And uh, Mr. Cassini is best known for being, I guess you could say, the uh, personal designer for Jackie Kennedy when she was first lady in the White House. And he's also done, um, was known for uh, doing costumes for uh, films and for many other uh, stars. So um, you should look up his bio, and he's, he was a, an amazing designer. I just love his work. And the last pattern in the prominent designers is from Luis Estevez, and he's another great designer. And we'll put that back into the package, to the box here. And now we're on to the Spadia patterns, and I have quite a few of these. Okay, now we have them. Now we have them all. Put some over there. Okay. And here's the first Spadia pattern. And this is from Henry Biren. I believe that's how it's pronounced. That's a great dress pattern. I love how that sits on the shoulders. And you have the Empire waist there with the ribbon. And the next is from Bill Blass. Another of my favorites. And this next pattern is uh, from uh, Monty Sands. I believe that's how his name is pronounced. And I have a great story on this pattern. I was involved in two auctions. And uh, the first one was, I believe, in October 2007 and the second, April 2008. And uh, in that uh, first auction, uh, the pattern I was one of the earlier bidders, but uh, later on the pattern that uh, the um, the bidding was just uh, going through the roof. So it uh, got up to uh, $355 and um, I wasn't willing to pay that kind of money for the pattern. However, in the second auction, I was the sole bidder and I bought the pattern for $12.50. And I'll share that with you. And by the way, this pattern is a swing trapeze dress jacket and it's from 1964. And I'll go ahead and Show you the auction receipts and, and I paid twelve dollars and fifty cents and one dollar for postage and the second auction let's see if I can turn this there we go try not to tear the paper here And the section, second auction was for $355. And uh, so, had I not uh, come across the second auction, I was uh, prepared to make the garment because I um, have some drafting skills. And so I could just um, draft the pattern and just make it from there. But I was just so happy to 
to be able to find it, and uh, now it's a part of my collection. I'm going to go ahead and put this back in the package here. There we go. And the next group of patterns uh, all came together, and this was from a collector. Uh, I bought this from a gentleman uh, who his mother collected sewing patterns. And two of the patterns uh, are from 1961, and uh, another two are from 1962. And let me take this out. And I paid $12 for all four patterns. And here they are. And the first pattern is from, from Shannon Rogers for Jerry Silverman. And the next one is Molly Parnas and Monty Sands again, and another Bill Blass. And that's great when you can uh, when you can get a, a collection of patterns like that, and then add them to your collection. Let's see if I can put these back in the package without any problems. And um, here I have my original, let's see, put that over here. And this is my original, uh, the original package that the patterns came in. So sometimes I'll keep that along with it, and it's got all of the uh, mailing information on it, the label. And let's put that back here. Next one. Here we go, we got it together. Okay, the next pattern is from Bill Blass. And I love this pattern. Love the neckline on it. And here's another Shannon Rogers for Jerry Silverman. And it's a nice pleated skirt. And I got the original purchase order receipt with it. And the newest addition to my collection is uh, this beautiful dress here. And it's got the little pleating here in the uh, bib part of the dress. And that's great. I'm going to go ahead and move these to the side. And uh, it's another great pattern. And I love how the um, sleeves here, you have box sleeves. And then uh, here, this is just a photocopy of a uh, Spadia pattern. Um, and sometimes this is what I'll do is I'll just make a um, photocopy of a um, garment because um, these uh, patterns are so rare. The one thing and I wanted to point out about my mail order patterns, I don't worry about the errors or anything. I just put them together um, in their in the group, and I just uh, just put them. Uh, I will file them by their uh, by their numbers. So um, I don't worry about the errors, be it 30s or it's 60s or 70s. I just go ahead and I'm file them together. And this next pattern is from Norman Hartnell. And Norman Hartnell is uh, best known for um, designing beautiful gowns for uh, the Queen Mother. And that's uh, Queen Elizabeth II's mother. He also um, designed for her. And uh, he and the uh, assistant um, designed her coronation dress in 1953. And uh, he's done quite a few um, gowns and other uh, couture pieces for uh, several members of the royal family, including Princess Anne, Queen Elizabeth's daughter. And then he's also done some uh, things for high society ladies. And uh, he's done, um, he's also done things for films and for stage. And, um, and then he was um, also depicted in the, the Netflix program, The Crown. So and uh, the next pattern is a dress pattern. And I just love this. I love the little panels there, little pockets there, and a little opening. It's a great pattern. And the last two patterns in the collection are from the Duchess of Windsor. And this is a new addition to the collection. And what I've done again is I've taken a photocopy of the original. And uh, this was one of those cases where the pattern did not come with a envelope. And, uh, and it's very rare that I um, have that uh, happen, but when I do, this is uh, normally what I do, is I will make a, a um, cover here and just put it in a six by nine 
manila envelope and then second okay, phone so there's a receipt there and there's the uh, instruction sheet and you can see that it's uh, disintegrating here and this is an unprinted pattern and I'll open this up for you so you can take a look at it this is beautiful pink paper and I think that was a signature of the um, of the Duchess and it's just great and we'll put that back in put that back in and the Duchess of Windsor collaborated with Spadia from the uh, 1950s to the 1960s so um, that was a great collaboration and uh, this is the next pattern from her. And uh, this is developed that it would, uh, her patterns would come in. And I'll show you what this uh, pattern looks like. And then also has the receipt to it. And it's a beautiful jacket and skirt pattern. Just great. And it has bracelet sleeves. And it has the little cuts right there on the bottom of the jacket. And it turns down buttons. It's just beautiful. I love that. And this too is an unprinted pattern. And I'll open that up for you. And she was a lady of great style and, and taste. So we'll go ahead and put this back in its package here. And put the receipt back in as well. So this concludes my uh, video on my vintage pattern collection and um, I hope you enjoyed this and now it's on to the 1950s, 60s, 70s and then on to the couture patterns and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.